Hello, my darlings. Today I'm delivering you a, a non-joke story because it's not April 1st anymore. This one is Bakugwek's listener and it is all three chapters of my story art block in, well, one video. Uh, for the people that are coming back to rewatch it in just one big dump, well, Welcome back and I hope you enjoyed just as much as you did the first time and for the people that are new here Hi, please remember to hit the subscribe button if you think I'm worth it and also the notification button Because that is very important as a matter of fact watching this video until the end Liking or disliking and commenting anything down below maybe a question how your day was or you know uh, how you're feeling uh, that's very important because this enhances my staying in YouTube algorithm and the higher my staying in YouTube algorithm is, the more people will watch my stuff and the more money I will get, you know? Uh, it would be great support if you could do that and very much appreciate it. Especially since the amount of people that think I'm underrated is uh, slowly rising just a, a tiny bit too slow so he, i technically still remain underrated so if you could also share this video around and any of my other videos share around i would greatly appreciate it if you could just get one person interested in watching my videos i will be eternally grateful to you now let's get right into the show It was your fifth attempt at drawing a rather morbid picture. The importance of it making this more frustrating than it already was. Your quirk, layers of fear, allowed you to draw the last moments of a murder victim's life, as long as you'd at least seen an image of their corpse. However, the problem arised from how your quirk activated. You needed to sleep and remember the dream you had. But for five days now your dreams were just twisted messes of limbs, gore and guts. The reason behind it was obvious to you. The victim must have lived more than a few hours while they were dying. While your quirk could handle just a few minutes of the dying process, Anything about 50 minutes would lead to them having too many alive moments for your quirk to deal with. Clearly the person who committed the crime was either a serial killer with a really fucked up sense of humor, or someone who knew about your quirk. And despite your best attempts, you couldn't help but imagine it being both at once. To say you were fearing for your life was an understatement, in addition to the gory nightmares you had to live through. And you sighed as you looked at your painting. It was still nothing more than just red splotches and silhouettes. It wasn't the first time something like this happened, but every time it did, you feared for your job. And then a realization hit you. Why were there more than two? It should just be the victim and the killer. But the presence of multiple shadowy figures implied multiple killers. You were about to reach for your phone when three loud knocks completely took you off guard. Your heartbeat increased and sweat began to build up on your forehead. With twitching fingers you reached for your gun. But then, someone called out for you. Hey babe, still working? Came a gruff shout from the door and a shower of relief overcame you. Due to the importance of your quirk, you had been assigned a pro hero to watch over you. At first it was awkward, but eventually you two developed a romantic relationship. While it was unprofessional, it was allowed since he wasn't directly a subordinate of yours at the department. You were however not allowed to talk about your quirk to him or anyone publicly outside of your superiors. Hence why he wasn't allowed into your art room. You groan and place your gun back on the table next to you and your painting before proceeding to the door. Atsuki, step away from the door, I'm coming out. You took the secrecy very serious. Your art room was covered in the gruesome images of your past work. Pictures of victims and killers alike. 
forever capturing the moment a person lost their lives and a formerly innocent person turning into a monster. With your ability, you had crucial part in many captures of difficult cases with the nature of the current world. There was just way too little evidence around crime scenes more often than not. You heard him step away from the door. And then you left the room and locked it behind you. Your boyfriend was wearing a nice suit as per usual. While you took your situation serious, he was taking it with some dry humor. It took you weeks of constant nagging just so he would stop talking like a bodyguard in an action movie. He adjusted his sunglasses and giggled. Girls ready, madame. Okay, maybe he didn't stop it entirely. With a cartoonishly deep sigh, he replied. <sighs> but sir, I'm currently way too underdressed. You were wearing an artist apron and under it a simple white blouse and comfortable black jeans. Bakugo scratched his chin. You know, drop that apron and you'd look freshly out of the office. If you ask me, so. It's, it's fine. Not like we're eating at Lunch Rush's Foster restaurant. You agreed with a quick nod and threw the apron at his face. Fine then, Mr. Katsuki. I'm sure you know where to put it. Some of the explosive blonde had patience with you. Patience he definitely didn't have for anyone else. Especially for the number two hero, Deku. Why he hated him more than the number one hero, Grape Juice, was beyond you. And the last time you had asked about it, he grumbled something about pride and not needing a loser's help. Today wasn't really a special occasion. Bakugo just had this need to go to a restaurant. Specifically, an American diner called Frankie's. That was just a few blocks away from your home, and you two ate there at least twice per week. Being regulars there had turned you two somewhat into an inside joke amongst the workers there. By turning the custom burger you always ordered into an actual menu item, called the VIP, due to you always having a bodyguard close to you. It really was always a great time at Frankie's. And it also was a lovely evening tonight. But you were just too tired from the stress caused by this case to fully enjoy it. You've been looking over your shoulder for a while now. Is everything okay? Mumble back could go to you eventually, and you shook your head. I'm fine, dear, it's just... You paused and once again looked over your shoulder. Can't get a clue on the guy and I'm not sure if it's... More than one killer. With each word, you got more quiet. And I have the feeling that maybe the guy knows my quirk. Katsuki frowned. Not even I know your quirk, babe. I'm sure you're just paranoid. He took another bite of his burger before continuing. Maybe you need a vacation. You nodded. Yeah, maybe. He threw a smug grin towards you. Ah. Not maybe. And suddenly a realization hit you. You just want to go on a vacation for this dumb junk food road trip you have been talking about. Bakugo crossed his arms. He always did that when he got behind his shenanigans. Yeah, you're right. Katsuki sighed. But it, it will make you think of something else for at least a while and I think it would greatly help you with your being overworked and stuff. And quietly he added, Plus, you keep waking me up with your screams. Fine, he eventually said with a defeated sigh. But I chose the country. In response, his face turned into a pained grimace. Bakugo loved eating garbage food, probably because he himself was such a great cook, that sometimes all he craved for was something low effort doused in grease. How does Italy sound like? He shrugged. Only if we eat pizza on a daily basis. You groaned. <sighs> Fine, you can eat pizza daily while I enjoy wine and bruschetta. The thought of doing exactly that made you hungry all over again and you happily dug into your leftover fries. 
Once you returned home, with happily filled bellies, you looked at your art room with a sickened feeling. Hey, there's some cheap tickets! exclaimed Bakugo while scrolling through his phone before looking at you. Babe? No tickets. You mumbled. Not yet. Not before that guy is behind bars. You felt his hand drop over your shoulder. <laughs> and get the fucker, babe. I believe in you. Hearing your boyfriend's encouragement filled you with determination. Something was wrong. Noises, weird noises awoke him out of a pleasant dream. The noise of weird hammering. And after that, he could barely hear the muffled sound of his own scream as the coffin was being covered with dirt. You awoke, screaming. Sweat was pouring down your face and your pillow was damp. The culprit for this was your quirk. However, at the moment you did not have any cases to solve. Yet your quirk kept on activating. Worse than it ever did. You had gotten used to almost daily nightmares. So one that affected you like this was rare. In fact, the last time it happened was while you were investigating a group killing. You dashed into your bathroom, leaned your head over your bathtub and began running cold water down your neck. This was your personal meditation technique. To be able to think straight again of the nightmare. Eventually your mind was able to focus again and you shakily sighed while getting back on your feet. He screamed until his voice was hoarse. His fingernails were torn and bloody from where he had tried to scratch the top of the coffin to pieces. At this point he was trying to calm himself down. He no longer could hear hammering or dirt pounding the coffin. That meant either he was too buried to hear anything else, or they had quit. You headed straight to your art room. The painting you weren't allowed to sell or haven't sold yet were lining the walls. But for three days now, one of them repeated over and over again with the exact same image. Usually each painting would have detailed at... Usually each repeated painting would have detailed... Usually, each painting would have details added onto it, the more you drew them. So whatever your quirk was telling you, this was all the information you would get. You took your colors and your brush and started painting. Once you were halfway done drawing, your phone rang. A smile danced across your lips. Maybe it was back ago. He and Deku had been chasing after a group of ruffians who called themselves the Jackals. They were small-time drug dealers and robbers, not big enough for the police to launch a large investigation, but not small enough to be completely ignored. Your smile turned into a frown when you heard Deku's voice. Is Kakchan with you? He sounded worried. He didn't even have time to say hello. Uh, no? Let me check. Without hanging up, you switch to the chat room app you used to talk with Bakugo while he's on the job. Three days ago, he sent me a selfie with you in the background saying, Sorry, babe, gotta stay at the office for a while. Deku gasped. What? It was unusual for Bakugo to sleep at the agency when he was having a rough time on the job. That was the last day I saw him. Slow your breathing. Slow. Slow. He tried meditating. The faster I breathe, the more air he would use up. Think. 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 How many hours could he last? Was this going to be his grave? Probably. In truth, he had given up hours ago, but 
something seemed to be holding him. Your heart felt like it was going to jump out of your chest. Are you still there? Deco? What case are you working on exactly? You asked very slowly as you were preparing for the worst. Well, we were working really hard on this case with a group of gangsters. He said he was going to scout out their hideout, but came back empty-handed. Then he said he was going home to you and that he needed a break. Tirko went quiet. He knew just as much as you what was happening, but he was too afraid to say it. So you gulped loudly as tears began to wallow up in your eyes. I've been drawing for three days now, Deku. None of you said a word for what seemed like hours, but it were just mere minutes. He tried to take his mind off the oppressive darkness around him. He pointlessly closed his eyes, desperately hoping he would awake out of this nightmare. Why did he make the mistake? How long had he been knocked out for? And why was his quirk not working? Then again, maybe that was good. How much time had passed? Not much. How much was left? He had quickly thrown a shirt and jeans and drove... You had quickly thrown on a shirt and jeans and drove at unnerving speed to the agency Deku was leading together with Bakugo. All four paintings were stored safely on your passenger seat. The final painting finally was different from the others and it gave you hope. It was the same image as usual. A picture of a clearing in a forest or park. Except now a hole with a coffin was laid out in the middle of it. The fact that Bakugo must have been alive before being put into it had three implications, all of them bad. Your heart felt like it was going to explode when you dumped the paintings on Deko's office table when he was frantically going for papers filled with texts. Crap, 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 he sputtered. Clearly he was just as panicked as you. Look! You shouted at him and he stopped and turned. With no mouth he stared at the pictures. C can you work with this? Please tell me you can work with this. He reached over to grab his phone, not giving you a second look. Sir, it's me, Deku. He nervously barked into the phone. I need rescue team at Okayami Forest. He paused. It's... it's Deku. No, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm calling fr from my office. No, 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 sir, sir, please listen. He sighed, annoyed. Sir, we need a rescue team pronto, or else the blood of my partner will be on your hands. A silence. Yes, sir. His girlfriend. Yes, the one with the art quirk. Yeah, yes, the, the one with the... Yes, she she's right behind me, sir. I, I, I really don't want to... He sighed. The chief says if your pretty ass gets him into trouble, you're in for a big one. You blinked. What? You were in shock, but Deku raised his hand and you kept quiet. The rescue team will be there in ten minutes. We need to be there before them so we can show them the way. My girlfriend, he thought. Who would take care of her? How sad was it that that was what he was worried about? He managed to smirk. Maybe Deku would take good care of you. He felt his eyes become heavy. At least he wouldn't have to starve. Suddenly, there was shouting. Lights everywhere. You had met with a small police force at the outskirts of the forest, and you had split up in three teams, each equipped with one of your paintings trying to find the right location, when it had suddenly started raining. Oh no, 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 you cried. The rain could destroy the paintings, and without any hope of finding your boyfriend. 
the colors were already mixing from your tears. Jacob was right behind you. He was sobbing quite loudly, clearly was making himself responsible. And then your foot hit a rock at the wrong angle. You were catapulted into the air by your own speed. The painting leaving your hands. Splat. You had landed face first in the mud. Dick was shaking hands, quickly picking you up. Are you alright? You whipped the mop out of your face and stared at the ruined painting. However, it wasn't a scream of terror that left your mouth. It was a scream of triumph. Look! Look! You shouted. With a dumbfounded expression, Deco looked around. Wait, this is... Guys, shovels, now! Yes, sir, replied the officer. With a replied one of the officers with a salute. You had reached the spot. The mud you fell into was the dirt mound. Bakugo was right below you. He just had to... You helped digging. Frantically digging in the cold rain. And then the sound of metal hitting wood. In this moment, all fatigue you had fell before. In this moment, all fatigue you had felt before was washed away. You fell on your knees and began digging with your bare hands as all thought and reason left your body. Meanwhile, Deku had contacted the rest of the rescuers. A team of paramedics was standing by. And then you opened the wooden box. There he was. Bakugo. His breathing was shallow, but as the rain trickled onto his body, soaking him and the coffin with water, he slowly opened his eyes. Without much thought, you threw yourself on top of him, pushing the air out of his body. <coughs> he coughed. I was about to be suffocated. Now I, I don't need your fat ass finishing the job. His voice was hoarse and weak. You ignored the insult and buried your head into his neck. Hey, hey, I'm... I'm still kicking. He whispered into your ear. Probably have to go to the hospital for a few days, for a checkup. Huh. I'll probably have to go to the hospital for a few days for a checkup, huh? You replied with a teary-eyed, Yeah. He exhaled dramatically and chuckled. <laughs> Fine. But only if after that, we go back to Italy for a few weeks. When you walked into the police station on a lovely Saturday morning, you had no idea what had been waiting for you. It was your first day off of your vacation in Italy. But the vacation magic didn't last for long. If you had known what happened over the past two weeks, you would have asked for an extension. Apparently, on the first day of your vacation, a large box of videotapes had been delivered to the police station. Sender unknown. Each tape documented a different murder and torture by a man who introduced himself as Moloch. The killer seemed to be always ahead of the police. Your commissioner felt mocked by this monster. No one at the station had ever witnessed something like this. No witnesses, not even missing person reports, with the exception of one, the first victim, a woman named Chihiro. She had three tapes dedicated to her torture and eventual murder. But the lack of any evidence was terrifying everyone. With a pounding heart, you were brought into the evidence room with the video player and the TV. An officer helped you set up the equipment. Hey, he said. You don't have to do this, said the man. You gulped knowing full well the potential consequences. I mean, everyone who watched them so far... I mean, everyone who watched them so far has not been the same, at least not fully. You blinked. I know, but I'm the best shot you got. 
Your cork was probably the only way the serial killer could be apprehended. I envy you, muttered the officer. Go get the son of a gun. With that, the officer left. With a shaking hand, you reached into the box marked with evidence, taking out the first tape. If this wasn't your job, you would have quit after the first ten minutes of the first tape, knowing what would come next. You had spent hours watching tape after tape of the gruesome footage, until the end of your shift, before you finally left the room. You were pale, shaking. Never in your life had you heard such blood-curdling screams of anguish. It was worse than any of your boyfriend's horror movies. Hell, you could probably watch all of them now and yawn. You had seen the devil in these tapes. There was no going back. For archival reasons, you had taken notes of the disturbing footage, half of it unreadable due to your shaking. You managed to keep your stomach contents inside you the entire drive home. But once you opened the door to the shared apartment you and Bakugo inhabited, you immediately fell on your knees. Unable to contain your feelings, you broke down crying. They laid for what seemed like an eternity, in a puddle of your own sweat and tears. That was until the unmistakable noise of keys turning threw you into a frenzy. With a panicked yelp, you crawled onto the nearby kitchen arming yourself with a knife. At first you heard the turning of the doorknob, followed by two heavy footsteps, your heartbeat reaching a painful frequency. Hey babe, you heard Bakugo's voice echo from the hallway. It was your first day home. <laughs> I had so much paperwork you wouldn't believe it. Your lips quivered. Knife still in hand, you sat down at the kitchen table. With your empty hand, you wiped over your cold, sweat-covered forehead. Babe? You opened your mouth to call out for him, but no noise escaped you. After a minute passed, you heard the door close. Bakugo began walking down the hallway, yawning loud enough for you to hear. You saw him walk straight past the kitchen into the bathroom, quickly followed by the drizzling noise of the shower turning on. Quietly, you stood up and checked the other rooms as fast as you could. Even going as far as looking into the various wardrobes, cupboards and cabinets in your living room, kitchen and side room. Last, you barricaded your art room by pushing the cabinet with your paints and brushes in front of its window. And then you locked all windows. Leaving only the bathroom one, since Bakug was still showering. After another minute passed, you heard the shower turn off, followed by the soft pitter-patter of his still wet feet. Then he opened the door. Smile on his face, he looked down at you before it turned into confusion. Hey, something wrong? You ignored him, weaseling to the bathroom window and locking it too. You're scaring me. What happened? After you closed the bathroom blinds, you took a deep sigh. Victim number three. She would not have been taken if she had done this. You muttered. N number three? Asked Bakugo. She, she did lock her windows. He climbed through one while, while she was sleeping. Bakugo took a step closer to you, gently placing his hand on your shoulder. But you shook him off. D don't touch me! You barked staring into his eyes for just a moment as he slowly retreated his arm. Then you walk past him into your bedroom. Bakugo did move from his spot. He was thinking, wondering what could have scared you so much. You were a strong woman, after all. But instead he simply dried himself off, and after a change of clothes he walked into the kitchen. Toast with melted cheese seemed to be the right thing for now. After heating up, he poured the liquefied cheese over a slice of bread. 
He headed slowly, deep in thought of what to do next. Once he finished, he poured himself a glass of wine. A sigh escaped him and he stood up, walking straight into your bedroom. First thing he saw was that you were sitting on your bed. Any chance you could tell me what happened? You shook your head. And is it okay if I come in? You shook your head again and he sighed. How about this? You want me to put in a warm bath for you? You didn't react. You knew you well enough by now that that was a sign of confirmation. While he was filling the tub, you quickly shuffled past him and knelt in front of the toilet. He only needed to hear a loud grunting and the splashing of the toilet to know that you were vomiting. The way you had said victim 3 had been all he needed to know. After you were done with your business, he helped you out of your clothes, damp from sweat and tears, before gently guiding you into the bathtub. Bakugo was about to leave so you could have rest, but you tightly gripped his wrist. Please don't. You begged quietly, and he smiled. Fine, was all he said. Patiently he sat down on the ground next to you while holding your hand, his thumb gently brushing over the back of your hand. He closed his eyes for a moment. Bakugo's day had been stressful. Despite the lack of any activity, the paperwork he had to fill out was tiring and had acquired all of his brain power. In truth, he had been hoping he would find you sitting at the coffee table in the living room, having ordered takeout. Maybe burgers. Part of him even had hoped for pizza, just for the poetic irony of you and him having been in Italy for two weeks. He sighed and leaned back bumping the back of his head softly on the bathtub. Eventually he dozed off, only coming to his senses about an hour later once he began to apply shampoo on your hair. After you were done washing yourself, he wrapped you inside one of his big towels and escorted you back into the bedroom where you dressed yourself. And without saying another word, you slipped under your blankets. Is it a... Uh... Okay, if I touch you? He asked. Once again, you didn't answer. Very gently, almost like a ghost, he slid behind you and wrapped his muscular arms around your slender frame. Bakugo buried his head into your still damp hair. Look, he whispered into your ear. I don't know what happened. He closed his eyes before continuing. But, listen, while I got your attention, he paused. Seeing you like this, it had hurt him deeply. I just thought I should tell you something important, something you should hear more often. With one hand, he softly combed through your hair. I'm proud of you. Now it was his turn to get tearful. I'm so proud of you. Your lips quivered. I love you so much. I really do. Now, let's sleep. You deserve some rest. <laughs>